and welcome to the Pig and Whistle Tales from Azeroth. As always here at the Pig and Whistle Inn in Stormwind, I go for a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. I grab a bottle or a pint, sit back and enjoy this episode. We'll be going over a multitude of things. Ice Crown coming out, 10.2 potentially, BlizzCon, Kel'Thuzad uh, dead maybe in hardcore. Um... But yeah, essentially, let's get straight into the weekly news, as always. Liskanoth and the Zakali Elders are your weekly world bosses. Liskanoth can be found in Thaldrassus, and the Zakali Elders in... Uh, I forget it. Zaralak Caverns. Legion Time Walking and Dragonflight Dungeons are your bonus event for this week. Legion Time Walking obviously offering up the Mage Tower as well. And Dragonflight Dungeons essentially gives you an extra piece of gear uh, at the end of each instance. Temple of Hot Mogu is your brawl for the week. This is essentially you gain a lot more haste, a lot more speed increase, stuff like that. And it's a very fast paced brawl, very quick to end essentially. Incomporal, Spiteful and Tyrannical are your Mythica fixes for the week. Incomporal, essentially you have to heal something, I believe. And Spiteful, when you kill a NPC or a mob... It will spawn a spiteful shade. These shades will fixate and follow players. Simply move it away, CC it, do whatever. It will die off on its own. Tyrannical, the bosses and the mobs that they spawn have increased health pools. So bring a talent build that can accommodate for that. Now, I've got a lot of things to get uh, into. Ice Crown Citadel. So Wrath of the Lich King, we will start off at. Wrath of the Lich King Classic and Ice Crown Citadel is the... Kind of the last patch. We do have another uh, raid that we are looking forward to, which is Ruby Sanctum. But Ruby Sanctum is very much a filler patch until Cataclysm came out. Ice Crown Citadel is the end of Ice Crown or Wrath of Lich King, in my honest opinion. It is when we fight the big bad of the expansion, that being Arthas and the Lich King. And essentially, it culminates in a really good. Um, final raid tier which was Ice Crown Citadel now it has uh, released as of uh, several hours ago essentially and uh, well it has uh, 12 bosses I think if I counted correctly yes yes I think 4 then you've got 3 there that's 7 and you've got 2 there that's 9 Another two, yes, 12, with uh, the 12th one being the Lich King. Now, ICC is, uh, I think Lich King as a fight is kind of when Classic became retail in terms of raid um, mechanics, because the Lich King Heroic has re- like a lot of uh, game mechanics, essentially. It's when they started to really go crazy with raids, um, in my opinion, or at least like take the architecture of not the architecture but the kind of skeleton of the fight of uh, Arthas and the Lich King and turn it into uh you know all of the content that you see later on in Cataclysm Missa Pandaria you know with raid bosses there and going forward now Ice Crown is a great great raid it's one of the earliest memories I have of World of Warcraft so it's going to be a massive massive nostalgic uh, trip for me when uh, myself and my guild raid it on Sunday which will be really fun can't wait for it and uh, it's generally what people regard as one of the best raid tiers in the game now you obviously have loads of raids to choose from you obviously have stuff like um Blackrock Foundry which is in Warlords of Draenor which is really good you have stuff for obviously like Antorus etc all of them are good raids in their own right but Wrath of the Lich King kind of set the precedent for going forward in the later retail uh, expansions, as it were. Now, as of talking about this, Ice Crown Citadel has already been completed. So I'll go back to, if you look at Mythic uh, uh, raids uh, currently in uh, like uh, retail, they usually take a week or two for everyone to clear it on Mythic difficulty. This is the hardest difficulty that you can do. Now, a guild cleared 25-man heroic, Wrath of the Lich King, ICC, in less than 30 minutes. And that, in my opinion, is crazy to think. It's a giant raid, so they must be blitzing through everything 
Uh, yeah, it, it's absolutely crazy. Um, literally, the Lich King was killed within 30 minutes of um, the raid releasing. That's how like bonkers it is, and that's how easy the earlier versions of uh, raid bosses are to some extent. Um, you'd l- most likely see in Cataclysm no one doing this nearly as much. You, you probably still would, actually. I suppose every single raid boss that is done beforehand, every guild that can like go back and watch it, you can you can see what's happened already. You can see how other top end guilds at the time beat to these uh, raid bosses, these end raid bosses like Deathwing, like um, Garrosh in Missa Pandaria. You know, everyone's got that information. And it's very um, worldwide now, so. It it probably is just going to be a continuation of that. There's not going to be many race to world firsts. Um, to be honest with you, it's it's very much going to be yep, steamrolled, done within the hour. And in my opinion, that's boring. It, it's a boring way to play it. Um, like it's very impressive. It is very impressive. Don't get me wrong, but I think that it's a boring way of playing it. Like great, you've completed it. What now? You spent 30 minutes, you've done the raid, now what, you're just going to quit off Wrath again? No, that's not fun, man. That, that's really boring. Because you're just going to go back in there each and every week and be like, oh, this is boring content, where's the new content? Like, what the fuck, Blizzard, you know, all that kind of stuff. When a lot of people just stick down in there and start progressing for a, a few weeks and such, they're not too crazy with, you know, how they prepare. Now, again, it's very much personal preference. Um... But it just doesn't seem fun to complete it within 30 minutes. I think it would be very fun in the moment. But then after that, it's like, oh, I really don't want to raid. <laughs> I, I, I've i completed it, essentially. I, I'm I'm bored of it already. So I just want new content. Um, it, It's one of them things, to be honest. It's one of them things. But, you know, each to their own. With ICC coming out, we obviously have Shadow Morn as well. So a lot of people can start farming for their legendary axe. This will take about three to four weeks to acquire, I believe, depending on the amount of um, or the quests, actually. It, it might be possible to farm it within, like, two weeks. I'm trying to think, because you need certain things from the bosses, and I'm pretty sure it's not guaranteed. You need the shards, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, it's probably three or four, actually, more, more so. Um, but yeah, ICC is out. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Check out like raids and stuff that are doing it. It's it's really fun to watch. And it kind of does start to bring in the retail version of World of Warcraft, in my opinion. ICC definitely uh, heralds in the retail version of World of Warcraft. And that's just my personal opinion. Everyone else can think differently. But in terms of raiding and mechanics, I definitely think it does. Now, go, sticking with raiding, and we're going back in time even further to Classic. And we're looking at Hardcore World of Warcraft. Now, Hardcore has been at the forefront of everyone's mind in the past month and a half that it's been out. About a month and a half, yeah. So it came out late August, if I'm not mistaken. And essentially, there are people who have completed Hardcore. Now, what do you mean by completed? Got level 60? Yeah, loads of people have done that. Absolutely loads of people did it. Some people did it after two, three days, um, which is great. That's that's great for them. But no, I mean completed it as in killed the very final boss, the last raid tier, like final boss in Classic. Now, you have Molten Core as your first raid, and you have Ragnaros at the end of that, Blackwing Lair and Nefarian at the end of that, Uncourage with Cthulhu, and uh, he has been killed. And now, finally, someone has killed Kelthazard in Naxxramas. And it was the Guild Frontier, I believe that they're called. And essentially, they have completed Hardcore. Now, this guild will still carry on and uh, clear Naxxramas and stuff, gear up their players, you know, have some fun with it. But they are the first to kill Kelthazard which is massive. It took them a month and a half of gearing or like leveling, gearing, prepping and stuff like that. They've had so many deaths along the way. Um, I think the guild leader basically said they had to kill it like 
on that day. Otherwise, if they kept going for like another reset, essentially, like wait another week, they wouldn't have had 40 people to fill a raid because of the people that were dying. So, yeah, it is kind of rough because everyone that dies in that raid, you can't just res them. You have to replace them. So you obviously have a finite amount of people. And if you run out of that, well, you're, you're just fucked, aren't you? you got to wait. you got to wait, go back to old raids and stuff in order to um, essentially like gear up these newer 60s that are coming into your raid so that they are actually going to stand a chance of surviving. Now, the Kel'Thuzad kill did not come at a cost. The Guildmaster and the raid lead of it did die. Uh, as well as several other people in the actual far, final boss fight itself. Now, to give you a perception of how long these people have spent on these characters, the raid lead who died on the final boss spent... It took him 110 hours to get to level 60. That's just to get to level 60, so 1 to 60. And it took... And he had a total of 480 hours game time that's time spent logged into the game on that one character so yeah it's pretty fucking nuts if you ask me um that is that is absolutely fucking crazy actually thinking about it holy shit 480 hours not like minutes hours and all of that's just gone. He died. He died in that final boss fight, that final boss room. And it's kind of a fitting way to die, I'm not going to lie. But they, they managed to kill KT. And it was massive because what is it now for classic? Like, especially what is it now for hardcore? Because no one can go for the world first. Like, uh, Kel'Thuzad, Cthune has been killed as well. Nefarian's obviously been killed. Rag definitely has been killed. All of the raids have been cleared in hardcore like that's fucking mad now i would like a guild to stream their progression in molten core blackwing lair uncarage and nax with the same 40 man roster throughout the entire thing i think that would be super impressive if they managed to be able to do that but i don't think that that's going to be possible for a while some people might attempt it but I don't think it's possible, to be honest. I think that no matter what, in one of the raids, someone will fuck up and die. They will just die randomly. And sometimes that happens in Classic. You can't can't help it. But I think that's what's next for Hardcore. And I definitely think they are going to be announcing at BlizzCon a um, WoW Classic Plus um, that might introduce new raids, might introduce new certain systems... Might introduce a new profession or two, maybe. Who knows? Um, we can only speculate for Classic Plus, and it's going to be absolutely amazing, whatever they bring out. And speaking of, we go back to Wrath of the Lich King, and it will be a Kata release date, I think, that we'll get. It will be, we are going to go back into Cataclysm, but we're going to make some changes to it. Not massive changes to Cataclysm, but some minor ones. They might keep the old world the same, and I think they'll introduce the new world that they brought out with Cataclysm. So what I mean by this is um, they revamped old Azeroth um, when they did the expansion. So they revamped everything, the Barons to, you know, the Plaguelands, absolutely everything, uh, quests, NPCs, etc., etc., and they also introduce new zones, such as Twilight Highlands, Vashir, anything like that. Um, and I think that they'll just add these zones, essentially, onto Azeroth, so Eastern uh, Kingdoms and Kalimdor. But they'll keep the two land masses the same and as they were in Classic, for those who are probably not as keen on the whole revamp of it. Um Although I do kind of enjoy the revamp version of um, Kata, I, I kind of do, which, which is weird to say. I, I think definitely, if you want to, update the cities. Um, the only thing with this is Cataclysm introduced flying into Kalimdor and Eastern Kingdoms, and uh, the problem with that is if they don't revamp the old world, it, it's going to be very weird because... 
the old world of Azeroth essentially wasn't compatible with flying. It never was. It's very 2D. So if you see a mountain far into the distance, that that might look like a fully fledged mountain. But if you actually fly over it, it's literally just a piece of paper with a mountain drawn on it. So that's that's kind of the problem that Blizzard would have in terms of fixing that. And I think that they would just maybe update it to match um, like the kind of... Uh, what what do you call it? You know, compatibility of flying in Kalimdor and Eastern Kingdoms. Uh, when uh, instead of like changing the entire like theme of uh, the game, no, not theme of the game, the entire look and feel of the game, it will still have that classic vibe, but it won't be actually Cataclysm. It will kind of be a sandbox Cataclysm almost, but it will keep the same raids, etc. Because the raids were actually quite good. Um, there was. Uh, a small four or two boss raid, which was Temple of the Four Winds or whatever it was back in or in Voldoon. You had Firelands, which is really good. You have uh, Dragon Soul, which is really good as well. You have multiple different raids um, that they could definitely utilize. And maybe I can't remember what the first raid of that expansion is. I feel like it is the one in Voldoon, but I could just be completely wrong. You have something like um, Vault as well with uh, the Tolbarad, um, which is the PvP uh, zone in just off the shore of Eastern Kingdoms. So, you know, there's many different things that they could do with Cata Classic, and I do believe that it will be announced in uh, or at BlizzCon. In terms of 10.2, we're jumping forward to retail now. 10.2, I think, will get announced at BlizzCon, and I think it will get announced for the week after BlizzCon. So BlizzCon will roll around, and everyone will hear nothing about 10.2, and then they'll go, uh, oh, here's the new expansion, and what about current life in Azeroth? Well, 10.2 will release next week, um, or like even tomorrow or something. You know, They'll do something like that to get everyone hyped, etc., etc. And 10.2, honestly, is shaping up to look, like be a really good um like patch it looks like it's got a shit ton that you can do in it and uh, you know just the cosme- cosmetics and the different raid tier different pvp tier different gearing etc etc all of it looks very good and uh, very much going to be like something that you want to play and uh, i think this is what's going to be all coming out like later on next year Classic Plus, I think, might possibly be end of this year. I would be very surprised. It's that or it will be something like uh, early next year, they will release Classic Plus content. And then the middle of the year, it will be Cataclysm. And then the end of the year, generally, they release the next expansion um, for retail. And we will be getting an expansion reveal at BlizzCon. That is pretty much 99% guaranteed only there's loads of leaks and stuff but it, it's basically called leak season for blizzcon so you see loads of stuff dotted here and here and there about like what oh my god this is the next expansion and shit like that i've tried to keep away from all of it i'm pretty doing a pretty decent job at it so far not seen anything but a lot of people are screaming that it's going to be a pirate sort of expansion uh, you can kind of see it because what they what they tend to do is introduce stuff that's in the next expansion like um in other ways so beforehand the there was a six month sub in battle for azeroth and what you got for the six month sub was a worm mount a ethereal worm and a sort of ethereal like garment and it's very shadowlandsy and we got shadowlands they did the same for dragonfly i'm pretty sure Yeah, they did the same for Dragonfly. I can't exactly remember what was given though, but they always do this. And a lot of people in the like have seen the trading post stuff, and they think, yeah, there's a lot of pirate stuff in here. We're going there. In my opinion, we're not doing that because we kind of did that with Battle for Azeroth. It was very piratey. It was very much you know that sort of style. And I think that they will want to stay clear of anything resembling that um, in any way, shape, or form. To be honest. So it's anyone's guess what it is, but I think that they'll do something with dwarves, in my opinion. It's it's just very rare. 
see anything. Um, we might be going back to the old world, old Azeroth, and doing something there. But honestly, anyone could guess. You know, we're dealing stuff with dragons at the moment, which is very fantasy based, which is very good. Um, we obviously have the potential void stuff with uh, uh, Iridicron walking through that void portal. I, I suspect that might be where we're heading, something like that. Maybe a Void and Light expansion, which will be really cool. But I don't think we'll be going out into the ether, almost, as it were, uh, just yet. Just coming back from Shadowlands. Um, I think it will be very much... Um, we stay on the mainland of uh, Kalimdor, Eastern Kingdoms, and they just do something with that, in my opinion. But that is it for this episode. Thank you all very much for listening. Do check out all the socials down below. We have Twitch, YouTube, uh, TikTok, constant stuff happening. The next stream will be on Sunday. It will be 8 CEST. And it will be the first ICC raid with our guild. So you're more than welcome to ta uh, tag along with us and uh, pop in and say hello. But with all that being said, thank you all very much for listening. And go with Valor, friend. Goodbye, all.